Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for hanging up on my daughter when she called? I, 45 male, have been a single father to Jenny, 21 female, for mostly all of her life. As soon as Jenny was born, her mother walked out on both of us, and I haven't heard nor seen her since. I tried to contact her, but after five years of fruitless searches, private investigators, court dates, etc. I just gave up, and decided that I was going to raise Jenny alone. I will admit that I wasn't the best father, working late nights, sleeping when I wasn't working, etc., but I did my best to provide for my daughter. Everything was going okay, Jenny was an average b student, played the flute, did basketball, until she went to high school. Long story short, she fell into a bad crowd and her life fell apart, she started staying out late every night, her grades dropped to F's, cussing and fighting back against me, etc., I cut back my hours at work to try and be more of a father to her, but she wouldn't have any of it. She said it was too late, and once she turned 18, she was moving out of the house and never coming back. I begged and pleaded for her to stay, that I care about her. I apologized for not being there more, but explained that I am human, and truly want to make this work. She had none of it, and true to her word, at 18, she packed her bags and left. I tried to get contacts with her, and even called her friends, but they didn't know, or wouldn't tell me, where she was. Again, the most important woman walked out of my life, and I was left there alone to pick up the pieces. The next two years were a black hole of depression, I barely had the strength to get out of bed most days, but that all changed when I met Dawn. Dawn was a new co-worker, and we hit it off instantly. She listened, understood, and helped me pull myself out of my depression. We bought a house together two years ago, and we've been making it ever since. Luckily, COVID has not affected us because since we both can work from home, and Dawn told me a couple weeks that she's pregnant. For the first time in my life, I am safe, secure, and I don't have to worry about the future. I can just focus on the present. That is until last week. I received a call from Jenny, which surprised me because I changed my phone number. She said she was sorry for the way she acted, and wanted to know if she could live with me. Apparently, when she left, she hooked up with her boyfriend, and thought they would make a happy life together. Surprise surprise, no high school education and a flaky boyfriend who cheats, was not a smart idea. I told her that it was too late, I was finally happy with my current life, and I didn't want to deal with her drama. She made her choices and she has to live with them. So, I hung up the phone and blocked the number. I feel like I shouldn't have hung up on her like that, but I was still hurt she ran off. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. So. You pretty much neglected your daughter the whole time she was growing up, after her mother ran out. She began acting out as a direct result of that neglect. Only then did you try making an effort. You have now found a new partner and are having a do-over baby, for whom you do plan to be present. And when presented with a second chance with Jenny, you call her understandable distress over her upbringing, or lack thereof, drama and block her. How are you not the a-hole? You're the a-hole. Keep in mind he was a single father, and it is very possible that working long hours may have been necessary considering mom was a deadbeat. At least that's how it worked out for me. You're the a-hole. You say she was the most important woman in your life, and yet your actions didn't confirm that. You condition your parental love on a basis of having your expectations met, I'm not sure you were meeting expectations of your daughter. I'm not saying you should let your daughter live with you, but dismissing her like that is horrible as hell. I hope you will be a better dad to your next baby. You're the a-hole. Her mother walked out on her when she was very young and you threw yourself into work. You didn't think you needed to change, until she was in high school and fell in with a bad crowd. So, for approximately 16 or so years, you worked too much and didn't spend that much time with your kid. Of course making a change then would be too late in the eyes of the child, who learned not to rely on you for more than material needs. She's 21. Her brain is still growing and learning. She made the mistakes a child would make. She didn't walk out on you, you weren't there for her when she needed you. And now you're not there again. You're the a-hole. You told her you cared, and when she needed you, you tell her you don't anymore. She made a mistake and now wants to try and make amends, and you hang up and block. You never truly loved her if you would just turn your back on her. How about she never loved him until she needed something? Isn't it coincidental that she is only contacting him now, because she is in a tough spot? She seemed to have no problem turning her back on him. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my, 29 mil, 
Mom, 58 female, if you want privacy, then move somewhere else, as a response to her complaints? I live in an apartment with three bedrooms, one large room, a smaller room, and a room which they marketed as a bedroom, but is essentially a hyped up room closet that barely fits a one person bed. I use the large room as a bedroom, and the second biggest room as a an office for my work, which is mostly done online even before Corona, so I can do without it. And the smallest room is not big enough to house my setup and files, and unless I massively downsize my bed, it doesn't fit in my room either, hence the office. The smallest room is set up as a guest room with a single bed, wall-mounted TV, and a small closet. It's cramped, but given it is usually just used for a few days by my cousins and friends, it works fine. The rest of the place is rather average, normal apartment, small, living room, with a kitchen and bathroom. My mom made a series of very dumb financial decisions since my dad died three years ago, and with her losing her job due to corona, she had to sell her house to pay several debts. Let me be clear, that the money she had could have had her living comfortably for the rest of her life without ever working again. She called me one day, explained the situation, and after a long argument, I relented and allowed her to move in with me until she got back on her feet, which I was angry about because I was on the brink of moving in with my girlfriend, and this put that plan on hold for the foreseeable future. Well since she moved in, it has been hellish. She complains every damn day about the smallest stuff. It only got somewhat better when she finally got a job, so she is out of the house for several hours. It honestly feels like I live with my parent, when in reality, she lives with me. I obviously put her in the guest room, and that has since been her primary aim for complaining. Not a day goes by where she does not witch about wanting the office as her room, as it is bigger. Obviously, that's not happening. Yesterday, she had a friend over, afterwards we got in another argument where she started yelling at me for not giving her any privacy, because I dared to go into my own kitchen to make a sandwich while she had her friend over. I finally lost my cool, and said what it says in the title, along with some choice words, and I am of the mind to kick her out at this point, even knowing she got nowhere to go. She has made a scene about it towards her siblings and other family, who have since reached out to me to tell me how much of an ungrateful SOB I am, to talk to my mom like that. So, I am here for outside judgment. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Seems like she thinks it's her place because you are her child. That is the feeling I get as well. She does have somewhere to go though. Surely your relatives wagging their fingers at your treatment of your mother can do better. Maybe they should take her in? Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. You don't owe your mother anything at that point. Tell the family members that are having a go at you, to take her in if they think she deserves better. I literally did exactly that yesterday, ha. Not the a-hole, it's your home. She's a guest. If all those siblings and other family dislike her situation so much, let them change it. I told them that just yesterday. The next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for not letting my family use my guest room even though they drove 9 hours to see me? I had a baby in June of last year. I also have an older son, who's just under 2 years old. The boy's father is not involved. But I have this friend. The friend lives about 20 minutes away, but offered to stay with me every now and again, and help with the kids so I can sleep and shower. When he stays, he uses the guest room. However, he's been staying on and off for nearly 4 months, so he's almost moved in at this point, and I sort of think of it as his room at this stage. He's at his place right now. I have family, mom, dad, brother, who live about 9 hours away. The last time I saw them in person was Christmas 2019, so they've never met my youngest. They've been talking about wanting to come see us, and I've expressed hesitation for obvious reasons. However, on our last call, about two weeks ago, they reiterated that they wanted to see us, and were working on how they could come visit, but we're still seeing what their schedule would allow. They showed up at my place this afternoon. No warning. Totally unexpected. They said it was a surprise. I made them all some tea, and they eventually asked if I could remind them where the guest room is so they can unpack. I said they can't use the guest room, because it's not really a guest room anymore. They knew about the friend, but I reminded them and filled in a couple of gaps, saying that while technically it's still the guest room, it feels weird letting other people stay there. I offered to help them find a hotel, and they agreed, but told me to only book it for one night, saying they'd figure out their own accommodations tomorrow. They left for the hotel a few hours ago. 
They called me shortly after they checked in, saying that if I'm unwilling to let them stay with me, then they're not sure what they're even doing here and if they're not wanted, they'd sooner turn around and go home. They'll be leaving in the morning. I asked them to stay and they said no, unless I let them use the guest room and stay in my home for the duration of their visit, as forcing them into a hotel, makes them feel unwanted and inconvenient. I said they were being absurd, and that if I didn't want them here, I wouldn't have booked them a hotel, I would have just told them to leave, and offered to pay for them to stay in the hotel for a while longer, but they refused and called me cruel for forcing them to stay in a hotel, when I have a guest room and my friend has his own place 20 minutes away. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your family sure is. 1. For surprising you, 2. For assuming they can stay with you, 3. Assuming you are fine with 3 adults staying in your home while dealing with a 6 month old and a 2 year old. I'd straight out tell them it's their fault for surprising you, and that should they ever desire to visit again, adequate notification is needed and they will not be staying with you. Also blackmailing them. Not the a-hole, they showed up with no warning during a global pandemic. Regardless of the pandemic situation where you live, there's still a pandemic and you have two young kids. Outside of that, they gave no warning about their visit. You're being more than accommodating by paying for their hotel. It's your home and your decision. If they had given you notice and allowed you to set terms and boundaries, this would not be an issue. So, they drove 9 hours and showed up on your doorstep with no warning whatsoever. Okay. Do your relatives not have a phone, cell phone, email even? No warning so you could clean, buy groceries, wash linens? To the house of you and your 7 month old daughter. During a pandemic, no less. Have they even had a COVID test? Oh my god, they are lucky you let them come in at all. I would have talked to them outside, 6 feet away, while wearing a mask. OP, wish them a safe, swift trip home. Not the a-hole. They have all possible methods of communication. They even own a fax machine for crying out loud. They said it was a surprise, but I can't believe they didn't even think to text me. They said that they had clean tests in December, and have been isolating since the new year in anticipation for seeing us, and traveled by car so they didn't have to interact with people. Both kids are boys by the way. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for cutting my sister off after I move out? Me, 23 female, and my sister, 17 female, have never been particularly close. My parents have always blamed the age gap for the distance between us, but that is really not the reason. For as long as I can remember, my sister has been a very manipulative and toxic person within my life. When we were younger, my sister would always create situations to get me in trouble, and when I would call her out on it, my parents would just tell me to grow up, as I was the older one and should know better. Some days, I would just be minding my own business and I would get told off for nothing. It managed to create a real void with my parents, especially my dad. My mom is a little better now, but still side with my sister most times just to keep the peace. Over the years, I tried my hardest to bond with her and have a relationship, but it has got to the point where no matter what efforts I make with her, she will still find fault. There were so many times I put in the effort, going to movies, dress shopping for prom, trips to the city together, etc., but she would just throw it back in my face. As she has gotten older, she has just gotten worse, and she is just an all-round awful human being to be around. It's got to a point now, where I can't say or do anything within my house without setting her off. I can't have success, as every time I do, I'm bragging to make her look bad. I can't be unhappy, as my life is so much better than hers. I can't make a joke, all about things totally unrelated to her, as I'm making fun of her. Sometimes, I can't even speak as I'm talking slash whispering about her behind her back. She is so paranoid about everything, that she constantly thinks everyone, especially me, is against her. My parents are useless, and just let her get away with things as it's easier, but they couldn't care less that it's making me miserable and my life 100 times harder. I'm so tired of walking on eggshells all the time, and I just don't want that kind of negativity in my life after I move out. My parents think I'm being unreasonable, and are saying I'm all my sister has, and that I need to make an effort to keep her in my life. But I feel that I have made enough effort at this point and that, if she wants me in her life, she now needs to make an effort. Am I the a-hole if I cut her off? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole, who you talk to as an adult is your business. It's possible your sister will grow up once you move out and try to reach out to you, and I think you should give her the chance if she's mature enough to ask for it. However, 
live your life in the meantime. It doesn't sound like you two are close, so you're not depriving her of anything. Not the a-hole. You don't have to keep toxic people in your life, just because you're related to them. Your sister is old enough to make the effort if she wants a relationship with you. Your parents being enablers has done her no favors for her future. Not the a-hole. Despite what people think, it's perfectly acceptable to cut off toxic family members. It's not something you need to get over. You made the effort. She didn't. You did your part. And if she's just getting worse and more toxic, then go ahead and cut her off. No sense making yourself miserable to please someone else. Not the a-hole. You don't have to keep toxic people in your life. No matter who they are. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.